I would like to rage. Every barbarian player ever barbaric rage and unrelenting savagery make for a powerful ally. The ancestor barbarian characters have been a staple of fantasy at least since Conan the Barbarian, i.e. since the beginning, as noble savages to a varying degree of noble who impress with their might and courage. Today, barbarians in fantasy retain this image of a savage warrior clad in simple or primitive clothing that rely more on brute strength and chaotic violence than any precise fighting style or cunning. Seriously. When was the last time you saw a barbarian with more than 10 int in D&D derp? The term barbarian comes from the ancient Greek varvaroi or barbaroi, and is used to designate an uncivilized person or a person of an inferior culture. In reality, practically all foreigners are those who did not speak Greek, as prior to the age of exploration, nationality was actually determined by language rather than skin tone were deemed to be barbarous and sometimes the term was used even for Greeks from other states. In fact the root word was barbaba, an automatopia for someone babbling in a language you didn't understand. Later on, the term was picked up by the Romans and used to designate anyone who could beat them reliably in a fight and wasn't a rival empire or another Roman army. It is particularly associated with the migrating tribes that ultimately conquered them during the Dark Ages and after that it referred to Goths and Vikings more specifically. In the pre-modern Chinese view of the world, there was the Middle Kingdom, China itself, the center of human civilization which was surrounded by barbarians which got more barbaric the further away you got from China. Though they actually had four different words for barbarians depending on which cardinal direction they came from relative to China. Barbarians are usually the subjects of the best fantasy movies. Conan the Barbarian and the Barbarians, as well as Fire and Ice, are excellent examples of awesome, cheesiness, and awesomeness and gayness, respectively. Barbarians in D&D The very first barbarian appeared in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 1st edition in the Unearthed Arcanus Black Book. Here, it was a variant fighter who had a background in a primitive culture. As a result, they have certain abilities, some shared with the ranger, such as wilderness survival, others unique, but also very strict penalties against using magical items or associating with wizards. This Mark 1 Barbarian has a d12 hit dice and better saves than the fighter. It can also climb walls as per a thief of the same level, as an increased ability to surprise foes 3 in 6, or 4 in 6 in familiar territory, or resist being surprised, 90% resistance, 95% in familiar territory, has a 5% per level chance of nullifying a backstab, has increased jumping abilities, has a 5% chance per level of detecting illusion, maxes at 75%, at 25%, plus 5% per level chance of detecting magic, maxes at 90%, and access to the ranger abilities of survival, first aid, outdoor craft, and tracking, plus potentially access to regional skills such as animal handling, horsemanship, running, handling small boats and imitating animal calls. Also, depending on their level, they can strike creatures normally vulnerable only to enchanted weapons of a specific potency. Starting at can hit plus 1 from level 4 and increasing by plus 1 every 2 levels thereafter. A level 6 barbarian for example can hurt creatures normally resistant to anything less than a plus 2 weapon, whilst level 12 barbarians can hurt anything that normally needs a plus 5 weapon. The downside they cannot use any magical items at first level, and in fact are actually compelled to destroy them if possible. As they reach certain levels, they gain access to magical items, starting with potions at level 2 and culminating at most magic items available to fighters at level 10, and no longer need to destroy those items. But, shockingly, most parties didn't seem to want to keep them around in the time it took to reach those thresholds. Gee, I wonder why someone literally compelled to smash loot in an addition built around looting might be unpopular. The next version of the Barbarian was as one of the kits seen in the Complete Fighter's Handbook. This is a kit restricted to fighters with strength 15 plus, and all it does is add a plus 3 bonus or minus 3 penalty to reaction rolls. It was, frankly, rather stupid and nobody ever bothered with it. It also introduced a separate fighter kit in the form of the Berserker, 
which was explicitly identical to the barbarian aside form the added rage feature which took 10 fucking rounds of you psyching yourself up to activate. Though admittedly this would be more realistic than the 5e barbarian's ability to just instantly become angrier than Alex Jones at the drop of a hat. But don't worry, if there just so happens to be a cleric in your party who took the barbarian berserker kit from their handbook, it only takes you 5 rounds. If you want to do it in 1 round then this cleric also needs to have just so happened to take the insight berserker rage ability granted by that same handbook which normally is explicitly mechanically different from your rage, as they can use it on any fighter. As if to make up for this, rage had a fluttering fuckload of effects. Pros you were outright immune to a number of spells, and got a plus 4 to saves against a number of others. Fear effects simply popped you out of your rage instead of having their normal effect, and charm effects affected you the way a 5e charm would. The finger of death spell, if cast at you, didn't actually take effect until after you came out of your rage. You were immune to cost from someone punching you in the face, and the actual damage was halved. You got a plus 1 to attack, plus 3 to damage, and plus 5 HP. Unfortunately however it had not yet occurred to anyone to make buffs like this scale with level. If you hit 0 HP, you don't actually drop until your rage ends. Cons you got a minus 3 penalty when attempting to socially interact with an NPC who wasn't also from a berserker tribe. You were actually required to stop keeping track of your HP while raging. That responsibility being temporarily transferred to the DM, who optionally also rolls all your saves for you. You weren't allowed to use ranged weapons. Which is odd since you weren't even allowed to take this kit if you had any ranged weapon proficiencies at the time. Though weirder still you were allowed to accrue some afterwards. Once you attacked a target, you weren't allowed to switch to a different one until the first one dropped. And even then you were only allowed to pick the NXT closest one. Barring a fear effect as described above, you came out of your rage if and only if every last enemy was down. Though strangely the rules explicitly said that they only had to be literally laying down on the ground, not necessarily dead. You couldn't take cover against missile fire. If an ally did something that might be misinterpreted as an attack, such as shoving you out of the way of an incoming attack, you had to pass an intelligence check for them to not aggro you. Bless and healing spells cast on you wouldn't take effect until your rage ended. Amusingly, taunt was automatically successful and caused you to immediately abandon your current target in favor of the taunter. Upon coming out of your rage, you collapsed in exhaustion for a number of rounds equal to the duration you spent raging. You also lost that bonus 5 HP, which, yes, could drop you to zero. 2e the unearthed arcana barbarian would return in 2e with a complete barbarian's handbook alongside the shaman, a kind of barbarian cleric. This version lost most of its 1e powers, retaining only the d12 hit dice, the enhanced leaping climbing affinities, and the backstab resistance. It also gained the ability to dual wield weapons, and far less stringent restrictions on magical weapon use or associating with spill casters. It also doubled down on the idea that barbarians hail from pre-Iron Age cultures, and included various kits based on those cultures. Ultimately, the Ad and D Barbarian was not very well received, and might have passed forgotten into history. 3e but for the debut of Dungeons and Dragons 3rd edition. Like the Sorcerer, the Barbarian of D&D fame is a true child of 3e. Everything that is viewed as iconic about the Barbarian was invented by 3e. For 3e, they get d12 hit points, uncanny dodge, illiteracy, damage reduction and can fly into a rage for some stat bonuses at the expense of AC and passes out when the fight is done. Until you get tireless rage, dip into Horizon Walker or a billion other solutions past core. Notably, it was this incarnation of the Barbarian that was back adapted into 2e for Baldur's Gate. Barbarian was changed a bit in the transition from 3rd edition to 3.5. Their Barbarian lost all their empty levels by gaining trap sense and damage reduction. While trap sense is normally considered super lame and damage reduction advances too slow to be meaningful, 
This does make barbarians have zero empty levels alongside ranger who gained abilities other than supericism. Barbarian is easily the class that benefited the most from the transition from a strict look at the class themselves, but the introduction of natural spell puts druid far ahead of it. While rage does scale, it does so quite slowly, and while they have no dead levels, the class features they get aren't very good. This and them losing their illiteracy if they multiclass makes them quite viable as a dip class or entry to prestige classes. In core only, Horizon Walker grants immunity to fatigue with a 1 level dip. One prestige class designed for them was Frenzied Berserker, which unfortunately causes you to lose control of your character and potentially kill the party. Bear Warrior is a much better barbarian focused prestige class which lets you get so angry you turn into a bear. Barbarian is considered a tier 4. They are very good at smashing things in melee, and have some wilderness physical skills that help a bit when that's not applicable, but are quite easy to shut down with some pretty basic challenges, like a monster that isn't just a grounded wall of meat, like one that can fly or turn invisible. Can't do much beyond direct HP damage, or tripping if specialized in it, and their skills are only an accessory. Pathfinder a lot like 3.5 barbarians, with a loss of illiteracy. Unless your archetype forbids reading, the addition of more trap scents, pfffffff, a rounds of rage per day mechanic that went up with level and constitution modifier, good thing. Unless you were dipping barbarian. And, the major new feature and draw, rage powers. That's right. Every two levels your barbarian bro learns a new way that getting really fucking angry can give him superpowers. These powers range from the useful, making combat maneuvers in place of regular attacks, to the impractically awesome, beating an opponent with another opponent, to the outright supernatural, sprouting claws and horns before gaining a pounce attack, to the hilarious, gaining big bonuses on swim checks. That last one makes sense mechanically, rage buff strength. After all, and strength is the stat used in swim tests, but the mental image is never not funny. Fuck you waterer awag. It's not necessarily top tier, though it may be the best among its fellow beatster classes, and it's certainly fun as hell and much more customizable than before. It's still tier 4, but the skill compression and rage powers make them more versatile. Lost a lot of its draw in 2014 when the Blood Ridger class was released. Why play a guy who fights by getting angry when you can play a guy who fights by getting angry, grows claws, wings, and fangs when he gets angry, and can cast spells like a weak sorcerer shoot. With the this really shouldn't exist primalist archetype, you can even get enough rage powers to make it practically obsolete. Though practically everyone knows this to be utterly fucking cheese and thus refrain from using it. The only draws left are basically the few archetypes that can do things it can't. Like the invulnerable Rager for damage reduction shenanigans. Also the Bloodrager's rage is classed as a supernatural. So ability and so is affected by anti-magic. Whether it somehow stops him being angry altogether or just cancels the magical effects is down the grams. The PF Barbarian is also the foundation for Assel Darba, the D&D equivalent of Brock Lesnar. Pathfinder Unchained offered a revision to the Barbarian, introducing a rage that wasn't so dependent on stats, so now you get plus 2 to melee attack melee damage thrown damage will and plus 2 thp hd to prevent death once rage runs out and your hp drops with your constitution and a few reworded rage powers. It was largely considered a side grade at best and a mild downgrade at worst since it lost out on all archetypes raw. But it at least made it harder for you to instantly drop dead the second your rage ends at higher levels. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedlier.co.uk. One stop shop for coom jar models. However we do sell a lot more than just smart models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and dnd 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy.
Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbeardiacontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. 4th ed 4th edition initially left the barbarian out of the game. One of the many things that triggered a knee jerk far TGUI reek. Whilst the designers tried to give it a more solid identity than just fighter who gets really angry. Their decision to tie it into the new mystical power group on the block. The primal spirits. Barbarians now mechanically emphasize their distinct culture background by having a certain level of affinity for primal magic. Which mostly manifested through a deep instinctive connection to totemic or guardian spirits by allowing these spirits to partially merge with them the barbarian could carry out feats of superhuman prowess but unlike the similarly themed newcomer class the warden the 4e barbarian was more of a martial primal hybrid the bulk of its powers still relied on its combination of distinctly ferocious fighting style and the ability to tap into a primitive wellspring of feral vitality and brutish prowess thematically very close to conan and his savagery bestowed might only the daily powers the rages were distinctly magical in nature as it was in this state of primordial ecstasy that a barbarian could open itself up to let a spirit channel its magic through their veins. Or, if they didn't want to be magical at all, they had a class feature called Rage Strike, which let them burn unused daily powers with the Rage keyword to make a perfectly mundane, just really, really hard, blow. Thus, Barbarians made their triumphant return in the player's handbook too and were surprisingly welcomed. Like all 4e classes, Barbarians have a precursor to 5e's subclass system for them. It's the class feature Feral Might, which is more or less their particular fighting style, granting them a bonus in counter power and bonuses to certain appropriate attacks. Four Feral Might branches were ultimately released. Rajablet Vigor and Thanaborn Triumph in the PHB 2, and the Thunderborn Wrath and Whirling Slayer in Primal Power. Rajablet Vigor gives you old school barbarians. They charge into battle headlong and rely on rage to weather the counterattacks as they kill shit. Their bonus power is Swift Charge, Instant Charge once a bitch dies, and they gain temporary hit points whenever they drop an enemy with their attacks. Thanaborn Triumph allows for chieftain flavored barbarians. They dabble a little in the leader role, as they work particularly well with others and specialize in charisma. Their bonus power is the Roar of Triumph, which lets them penalize nearby enemy defenses once per encounter after killing an enemy, and their class feature is that enemies they bloody grunt an attack roll bonus to the next attack against them made by either the Barbarian or one of his allies. Thunderborn Wrath gives the most overtly magical Barbarian subclass with fluff about how their battle cries are so awesome. Spirits of Thunder follow them and join in whenever the Barbarian starts hollering. They do bonus thunder damage to each adjacent enemy whenever they bloody an enemy, and their war cry is like the Thanaborn's roar of triumph, except that it pushes instead of dropping defenses. Whirling Slayer permits dual wielder Barbarians who rely on mobility more than other Barbarians lashing out in all directions and skipping away from retaliation blows, which their class feature and their whirling lunge power supports. The essential subclass for the Barbarian, the Berserker, was released in Heroes of the Feywild. Overtly called apart Martial Striker Defender, in contrast to the Barbarian being pure striker, it basically dropped the rages to focus on purely mundane attacks based on being tougher. Stronger and quicker than a civilized man. You know, the same shit barbarians could already do if you wanted to play them that way. 13th age and 13th age, barbarians are the easiest class. The classes are lined up from easiest to play to hardest. Barbarians are first. This is unfortunate for barbarians as the consensus is that the simplified classes generally suffer in the gameplay department. And barbarians get the worst of it. Barbarians can rage which is the daily effect they can perform as a quick action. When attacking they roll 2d20 when making attack rolls and take the higher die. But if both die are 11 plus, they crit. After raging, you have to make a con roll of 16 plus to keep it. Talent wise barbarians are one of the few classes that get more than the base selection of talents. They all focus on making bitches bleed and making you bleed less. 
they were given an update in 13th Age Glorantha. 5th Ed Barbarians in 5th edition D&D are largely unchanged from 3.5 Barbarians. Except their ages are better. While raging they get resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Damage bonuses and advantage on strength checks. Including athletics for wrestling people down. Barbarians can add their con bonus to AC if they don't wear armor. Meaning that you can now be a truly manly berserker and charge into battle without a shirt on. All the while having the AC of a knight in full plate as enemy blades bounce off your manly abs. Just don't ask where this effect is actually coming from. Their rage only applies to melee attacks now, though. So bows are less viable than previous editions. Barbarians have the easiest advantage generators in the whole game with reckless attack, which makes them the best class for great weapon master feat, offsetting that minus 5 to hit for massive massive damage. As they level up barbarians get simple but powerful abilities, like increased movement speed, stronger criticals and ability to not die when they are killed. Oh, and they are also the only class that gets to go over the hard cap of 24 strength and constitution, gaining plus 4 to both at level 20. The class feature variants UA gave barbarians two benefits. Survival instincts gave them double proficiency in two skills out of the gate, but cost them danger sense and instinctive pounce replace the default speed boost with the power to immediately walk up to half their speed in response to an enemy moving closer. Come Tasha's cauldron of everything, both of these got reworked so as to not replace actually vital features, a major plus. They now gain proficiency in an additional skill from what they could take at creation. At levels 3 and 10, and level 7 grants them the ability to immediately move the moment they rage. They also seem to be Watik's favorite target for weird subclass ideas. Called Primal Paths, Path of the Berserker turns the Barbarian into a rage warrior of death. Compared to the other subclasses, it has more thematic similarities with early editions. Their first subclass feature is Frenzy which can be used when entering rage to gain a bonus attack each turn for the rest of the rage. Besides the boost in damage, it also doesn't need the attack action to be taken. And like other sources of bonus attacks like two weapon fighting or feats, letting you dash, dodge, chug potions, etc. And then attack in the same turn. Any barbarian's rage will end early if a turn passes without attacking or taking damage. So Frenzy's bonus attack maintains rage while freeing up your main action. The other unique part of Frenzy is that instead of being limited to one slash long rest it's tied to levels of exhaustion. An obvious nod to how rage in previous editions ended with fatigue and possibly at negative HP. Exhaustion level 1 isn't a big deal for barbarians so they'll usually Frenzy once per long rest. But if the situation gets really dire you can frenzy multiple times and increasingly overtax yourself. Just remember that you'll be feeling it for a few days. They also gain immunity to charm fright while raging. A nod to how rage in 3e gave a bonus to will saves. Intimidating presence. Basically a single target version of the fear spell. And retaliation which lets them immediately strike back after being hit. Combined with frenzy this adds up to a possible 4 attacks per round at level 14. All with advantage and enhanced criticals. Without taking feats. All in all, this path is a single minded killing machine with no regard for defense. Path of the Totem Warrior grants abilities based on the selected totem spirit. It also gives you ritual only spells to communicate with animals and to summon one of the spirits for information about the area. You can pick from the different totem spirits three times total, and each totem gives a different benefit based on whether you selected it first, second, or last. As shown in order below, Wolf is the pack hunter one, giving advantage to your friends when you are surrounding your enemy, better tracking and stealth during travels, and the ability to knock enemies prone instantly after hitting them. Bear is the hardy one, making you resistant to all damage, minus psychic, because get out of my head, Charles, making you better at pushing and carrying stuff and forcing enemies to focus fire on you while raging. Bear Totem Barbarian is pretty much the default barbarian tank meat shield. Eagle has the best utility ones, 
giving you a bonus action dash and making opportunity attacks less likely to hit you. Eagle vision. You can literally see something a mile away without a problem, and eventually allowing the barbarian to fly while raging, but not allowing him to stay in the air after his turn. So essentially, it's just the ability to jump your speed and change direction midair whilst raging. Elk is a weird set of mobility powers that makes you move faster while raging, makes your group faster when traveling distances together, and lets you run people over while raging. Tiger lets you jump better, skill monkey a bit and eventually pounce on a target with an additional attack. Not great on its own, but if you're mix and matching, some of the powers aren't bad trades. Getting a couple extra skills is never a bad investment. For instance, Path of the Battle Roger, named after a temp HP gaining fighter subclass, actually borrows its lore from a special order of dwarf barbarians in the Drizzt novels, and so is a heavily armored barbarian who wears massively spiky armor and basically specializes in hurling himself blindly into the fray so he can use his armor to rip and tear people whilst he rages with an extra attack per round. Admittedly an unarmed strike, but 1d4 plus modifiers is still a bunch of damage when you're a barbarian, and bunches of temporary hit points to offset reckless attack whenever you use it. The main downside is that your powers only work when you're wearing a very specific suit of very mediocre armor. Path of the Ancestral Guardian is able to commune with summon its ancestral spirits while raging. Meaning that if you are a dragonborn you can summon the ghost of a dead dragon, giving it overturns of the shaman from 4e. Don't be fooled, though. This is the tanking subclass. At third level, as the ancestral protectors, they can distract any enemy you hit while raging, imposing disadvantage and half damage on attacks not targeting yourself. At sixth level, upgrading to spirit shield. The spirits can use your reaction in response to a nearby creature taking damage and reduce the damage. At 10th level, you can consult the spirits once per short long rest to cast augury or clairvoyance without spell slots or materials. Finally, at 14th level, the vengeful ancestors can react to someone hitting an ally by beating the shit out of them, inflicting force damage equal to the amount of damage prevented by spirit shield. Path of the Storm Harold. Meanwhile, has a little in common with certain rage powers from the 4e barbarian in that it's a barbarian who taps into primal magic while raging to cloak itself in a shield of elemental energy. You need to pick whether your storm comes from the desert, sea, or tundra at third level, which determines what sort of benefits you get whilst raging. Your aura starts off by inflicting fire damage to everyone in your aura, zapping one target with lightning, or giving temp HP to nearby allies, respectively. These effects can be reactivated as a bonus action during rage. Later your choice gives you fire resistance, lightning resistance and water breathing, or cold resistance, at all times. At 10th level your aura extends that resistance to your allies, and finally it gains more powers to use against foes, dealing fire damage, knocking down a target, or freezing it in place. Two of the auras require saves every turn for middling damage, which means that this subclass can slow down a game something fierce. Path of the Zealot can be summed up as Holy Berserker of the Gods Corn Berserker, but can be refluffed into more of a necromantic bloodrager type. The Crunch can be summed up as the man literally too angry to die meme made manifest. It inflicts extra necrotic or radiant damage chosen when you gain this feature to the first target you hit on your turn, allows you to be resurrected without burning through those expensive diamonds. Not that most DMS pay attention to that sort of thing anyway, can choose to re-roll a failed saving throw once per rage, can unleash an inspiring battle cry once per long rest, and can keep you fighting at zero hit points so long as you're raging. It's recommended to yell about spending your blood willingly and your god blessing your ravaged body while you rage. Path of the Wild Soul is basically the first official 5e blood rager. These guys have access to a pool of wild magic when they rage, 
which results in them gaining overtly magical effects to their raging rather than being able to rage and cast spells. A wild soul barbarian can detect magic constitution modifier times per day and gains one of eight random wild magic auras when it rages. From 6th level can grant spellcasters a random spell slot or grant a small bonus to any rolls for everyone else. From 10th level can re-roll which wild magic aura they get whenever they get hurt. And from 14th level can roll their magic aura twice and pick the most favorable one. Path of the Beast is basically a shamanic simulation of lycanthropy. Less potent but with no side effects like uncontrollable frenzy. Beast barbarians transform into half animal monstrosities when raging. Growing natural weapons. Choosing each time for great flexibility. Snapping jaws or giant mandibles to bite people with which actually lets them heal a bit if they damage their target. The healing is rather small, but over the course of battle it adds up to quite a lot. Great meat shields at early levels, almost on par with bear totem, although later that healing drops off compared to the level of damage you take. Claws on hands that grant one extra attack. Not extra attack as a bonus action, just extra attack. This is flat out better than Berserker with the only downside being rather mediocre d6 damage die of those claws. The obvious damage dealing option. Long prehensile tail is a hard hitting reach weapon. Pretty much a pike lance that works at close range and don't take hands. For when you need to hit hard over hitting a lot. More importantly. If someone you can see within 10 feet of you hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction to apply a d8 to your AC. The obvious downside is that their natural weapons don't get the same cool effects high-end magical weapons do. The less obvious downside is freaking out town's guard and attracting all the werewolf hunters around. Jaws and tail don't take hands, so the beast barb can wield two weapons and a shield for great versatility, have an empty hand for wrestling people down or even wield two shields. Plus two AC don't stacks, but if both shields are magical, their enchantments do stack. Later they could make their beast weapons magical and gain beastly mobility, either swimming and breathing underwater, crawling on the walls and ceiling, or jumping insane distances. They get to infect enemies with frenzy when they attack them, forcing them to either attack their allies or suffer decent psychic damage and finally get to give their allies extra damage during their rage while also healing for each ally they catch. Barbarians and Diablo Hellfire The very first Diablo game did not include a barbarian class. One was designed for its expansion pack, Hellfire, with internal bickering between Blizzard North, Blizzard South, Sierra, and Synergistic Software, which were all owned by the same parent company prevented its official inclusion. The relevant data and assets were still on the CD, though, so the Barbarian and a fuckton of other disabled features, like the bovine plate quest, could be easily re-enabled with a simple text file. This version of the Barbarian was more or less a modified warrior. It sacrificed the warrior's already meager ability to use magic in favor of a slightly increased strength cap. 255 instead of 250 and a vastly improved health pool. The Barbarian could also wield two-handed weapons in one hand, an ability that would reappear in later versions of the class. Because the dickheads at Blizzard wouldn't let Synergistic finish the class, it uses the same artwork and sound effects as the Warrior. Diablo II Diablo II included the Barbarian as one of its five core classes. This version of the Barbarian had some ability to use magic, though more in a calling upon nature spirits kind of way than a fireball throwing kind of way. From the Hellfire version, it copied the ability to use two-handed weapons with one hand. From the Hellfire's other hidden class, the Bard, it copied the ability to dual wield. Its signature attack moves included the ability to spin around like the Tasmanian Devil from Looney Tunes, cutting down everything in its path. The expansion pack, Lord of Destruction, Included an entire fifth act full of nothing but barbarian NPCs, including ones that you could hire to follow you around and kill things for you. Diablo III Diablo III dares to be different and is thus contentious between longtime fans who expected more of the same from previous entries and fans of the designs and mechanics of the class who are new to the series. Many deride the entry for deviating from their expectations 
Others applaud the choices, like it or not, pick the right equipment and skills and the barbarians can rampage through entire hordes of enemies without fear. Then again, so can most other classes, but just not always in melee. Interestingly enough, the male barbarian and Diablo II was actually the same character as the Diablo II barbarian. Just older and, presumably, angrier that he has to do this all again. Barbarians in Magic The Gathering Barbarians are were a very common creature type in Magic the Gathering, and have usually been read. The first were the Balduvian Barbarians and Barbarian Guides from Ice Age. Barbarians and other things Warhammer Fantasy, Warriors of Chaos Warhammer 40k, World Eaters, Space Wolves, White Scars Barbarian Prince, a solitaire board game from 1981. Calerith, 